Susan Poupart, a mother with two young children, disappeared 24 years ago Tuesday. She was found murdered six months later. No one has ever been charged for her murder. Tonight in a Newswatch 12 exclusive, you'll learn new details about the case, see newly released photos from the crime scene, and for the first time ever, visit the spot where Poupart's remains were found. Investigators believe someone knows how she ended up deep in a Northwoods forest. I have a picture um, of Susie with her two children. As I've moved from office to office, I just, I bring it with me. Um, it's just to remind me that, uh, you know, that that's an unsolved case. The cold case weighs heavily on Vilas County Sheriff Joe Fath, just as it has since 1990. He was one of the first people to investigate 29-year-old Susan Poupart's disappearance and murder. Now as sheriff, he hopes new forensics and new interviews will lead to charges and convictions for the Lacta Flambeau woman's murder. She was attending an after bar party uh, on Muckwa Street and she left at a party approximately 4 a.m. Many people saw her get in the car with uh, Joe Cobb and um, Robert Elm. One eyewitness told police two men forced Poupart into a car. That was May 20th, 1990, the last time anybody saw Susie. Both Joe Cobb and Robert Elm are considered suspects, as well as Fritz Schumann. His name came up in interviews after Poupart's disappearance. All three still live in the area. Cobb and Elm told investigators they were driving Poupart home, but they ended up dropping her off at the old Lacta Flambeau Elementary School, where the casino is now. Officers had conducted a number of interviews with people that were involved um, that over that initial time period didn't really seem to make sense. On Thanksgiving Day 1992, hunters were walking here in the Schwamigan National Forest in Price County. They came across this area where they found Susie Poupart's purse, her tribal ID, and a jacket underneath this log. And when they pulled the jacket out, they found a human jaw. There were indications that the remains had been scattered by animals, um, and we didn't see that same indication in the clothing. Investigators believe Poupart had been sexually assaulted and left naked. They also think her remains were wrapped in plastic since they found plastic and duct tape at the scene. The remains have been covered by logs and brush. It appeared there was animal activity that dispersed the remains and the vast majority of the remains were not recovered. Investigators think one of the suspects used to hunt in the area where the remains were found. But at the time Poupart's remains and belongings were found, DNA technology didn't exist. That's why the sheriff's office is resubmitting evidence for DNA analysis. We're examining evidence typically for body fluids, typically, whether that's blood um, evidence, whether it's semen, um, saliva, um, it may be hairs. Dan Campbell supervises forensic DNA analysis at the Wisconsin State Crime Lab in Madison. He says they have been able to get DNA from evidence more than 50 years old, but certain factors make recovering DNA from evidence very difficult. Um, humidity, sunlight, um, you know, just the UV light associated with sunlight can break it down. So the, the natural elements out in our environment over time will have a degradation effect on DNA. And at some point, um, that DNA may not you know, be, be viable for us to get a DNA profile. Even if the lab can't find DNA on the items left at the scene, the sheriff says that won't stop investigators from moving forward with the case. Eventually, we will uh, convince a prosecutor and a judge to move forward with charging um, this particular case and, and not moving it forward for the courts to address. Susie's remains were found in the Shaquamagan National Forest, which is federal lands. Uh, there are federal statutes that apply to um, this type of crime. Um, so that's a, that's a possibility that we um, move forward in state court and or um, ask the U.S. Attorney to consider moving forward in federal court. Above all else, they want people to come forward with any information. Over the years, we've had a number of individuals come forward with information that they actually believed we already had. Frequently, um, we don't have that information. Anybody with any type of information pertaining to uh, the Susie Poupart case needs to come forward and talk to law enforcement for the sake of Susie Poupart's family. There are people 
in the Lac de Flambeau community that know what happened to Susie. This is going to involve not only our department, but uh, the Lac de Flambeau community to solve. And, and I'm confident we can do that if, if the people that have the information come forward. Investigators are conducting new interviews. A new special agent for the Division of Criminal Investigation has been assigned to the case. She's even working out of the Vilas County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff Fath believes even if DNA isn't found on the evidence, they could move forward with a circumstantial case. He points to the recent conviction of Mark Buckeye for murdering his wife Anita in Lincoln County. If you have any information related to the disappearance and murder of Susie Poophart, call the Wisconsin Department of Justice, Division of Criminal investigation and ask for special agent Tammy Augsburger. You can also call the Vilas County Sheriff's Office and ask for Lieutenant Carl Gauger or Sheriff Joe Fath. There is a $20,000 reward.